Hey guys, it's Soul Cake on the Refresh Your Pressure YouTube video, and today we're going to be talking about the WWE 2020 Draft, which is happening this week, and uh, today is Wednesday, so that means we got Friday Night Smackdown and Raw for this epic draft, alright? So what I've done is I've taken, I've drafted uh, only five members to each show, the five people who I think would work on new shows, or who need a bit of a, um, a shake-up, something new, um, you know, new faces on new shows. So let's just start it. SmackDown, we're kicking off SmackDown, um, this thing with SmackDown, I don't watch it, because it's bad. Uh, the Roman Reigns stuff has been pretty good so far. So I've been tuning in for that, but other than that, um, I feel like SmackDown's overproduced and a lot. It's too much. So let's kick off with our first draft pick for Friday Night SmackDown, Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio's been on Raw for a long time now. So I just think for Rey, it would be a good time to send him over there. And not that the Rollins stuff hasn't been amazing on Raw. I just think it's time to separate the two, give something a little different, and um, move on to something new for Rey Mysterio, like maybe even challenging Roman Reigns for the Universal title or something else on SmackDown. I don't know. Having some matches with AJ Styles, um... Maybe it's Matt Riddle or something like that. Um, something along those lines. Some cool stuff for Real Mysterio. So let's move on to our next draft pick for Friday Night SmackDown. And it is Killian Dane. I love Killian Dane. And I would love to see this guy come up to the main roster and do some cool stuff. Um, you know, remember watching him back as a big demo in WCPW. You know, having some pretty cool matches. So I think seeing him... This guy on SmackDown, a new face, um, a new face to, a new challenge, really. He, he's a guy who can be the big, you know, brawler, um, and can tear some things up, you know, maybe eventually even, you know, another challenger for Roman Reigns. I think Killian Dane could be a really big star if they just used him. <laughs> Alright, next up is Kevin Owens, another guy who has been on Raw for a hot minute. And I think they're already setting this up because I think Kevin Owens is going to go over to SmackDown and feud with The Fiend pretty much full-time. They'll go over to SmackDown, have a feud with The Fiend, then maybe take some time off. Whatever. Excuse me, I am tired. <laughs> so, I mean, Kevin Owens, I love Kevin Owens, but, man, I just think it's time for something new for Kev. Um, go over to SmackDown. Once again, another guy who can be um, a, a legitimate threat to Roman Reigns' title. Another guy. I mean, SmackDown's main event scene's lacking, so having a couple guys go over there and really help out that division would uh, be beneficial for SmackDown. Ricochet! Speaking of weak links on SmackDown, their mid-card has been the AJ Styles show for the longest time, which isn't a bad thing, but having some new people for AJ to wrestle, I mean... How long has he been, you know, he did the thing with Daniel Bryan, and he had Matt Riddle, but, you know, I just think, AJ's not even an Intercontinental Champion anymore. <laughs> Sami Zayn, ah, oh, dude. I mean, just imagine the matches Ricochet could have with, like, Sami Zayn, though. Sami Zayn, uh, AJ, I mean, those, I mean, have been really the main two guys in the, um, Main event scene. That just goes to show how much I watch SmackDown. <laughs> awesome ladder match, by the way. Uh, those three had. But let's move on to his 
girlfriend, I think there's still a thing. Casey Catanzaro, bring her up. Plucky young female baby face, you know. Um, once again, SmackDown also lacks in their women's division. It's been carried by Sasha and Bailey for the longest time. Um, honestly, like, if it were a perfect world to me, I have said for the longest time since the draft that I, uh, since the uh, 2016 brand split, I think the women's division is too thin on both sides, on both Raw and SmackDown. NXT actually has a pretty deep women's division with a lot of great talent down there. Um, I think WWE could strongly benefit from merging the SmackDown and Raw women's divisions and keeping the um, tag titles the way they are. Uh, that way you're splitting the division less. Because right now you're splitting the division three ways and there's not enough girls in that division to make it feel special. You know, like, to make it feel new and fresh every week. So I think since they're not going to do that, they should start bringing in some new faces like Casey Catanzaro, who is incredible in the ring. Uh, amazing talent, you know. But also what she could do in the Women's Royal Rumble. You know, all amazing stuff. So, on that note, let's move on to Monday Night Raw. And our first draft pick for Monday Night Raw is... Daniel Bryan. He has been on SmackDown for ever since 2016 Smackdown has been the home of Daniel Bryan and I think it's time for Daniel Bryan to make his way to Monday nights mainly because I want to see more Daniel Bryan because I watch more of Raw than Smackdown by the way I think Raw has low-key been the best overall product on in wrestling right now. Like, that's just my opinion. That has, like, some of the best storylines going on right now. Like, Randy Orton, just the entire Randy Orton saga since, you know, since the since after the Royal Rumble. I mean, the Rollins, Mysterio stuff, all of it. It Everything, on like, even their tag team division is actually a good tag team division, you know? Even though... The Street Profits have had the titles for ever. Holy fuck, I can't stop yelling. Jesus Christ, that's so unprofessional of me. <laughs> but Daniel Bryan would be a nice new face to see on Raw. I think um, they're kind of running out of viable talent for Drew, for Drew Russell. Um, other than Keith Lee, like that's the only other person I could think of. Unless at uh, at Hell in the Cell, they're going to have uh, Randy Orton take the title from Drew, which could make sense and could be cool. Just depends on how they do it. So next up, we got John Morrison. Once again, a selfish pick because I want to see more John Morrison. And I also want to see a John Morrison solo run. And I really, really, really want to see a John... Morrison WWE Championship title run. I've been a fan of John Morrison since I was a little kid, and I think it would be really cool if he finally got the push to the championship. This guy is so good, so talented, so athletic. Dude, and the matches John Morrison could have with, like, Murphy, Seth Rollins, Andrade, Angel Garza, uh... <sighs> Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, uh, Edge when he comes back, all these people. Dude, I think John Morrison as a babyface champion, just having a bunch of awesome matches would be amazing, dude. I think that would be so cool. So next up, we have Braun Strowman, because it looks like they're doing it anyway. It's kind of an obvious choice, you know, Strowman's kind of one of those who 
flip flops every draft. You know, he's always drafted. You know, every time there's a draft, he's drafted. You know, first time he was drafted to Raw. Second time around that they had a draft, he went to SmackDown. You know, and now this time, I think it could be time for him to go back to Monday nights. Next up, we have Adam Cole Bay Bay, and I think this is the beginning of the platonic breakup of the undisputed era. I don't want to see the era implode. I don't want to see the undisputed era implode. I don't at all. I just want them to go their separate ways, not like an implosion. And I think it could be really cool if you have Adam Cole go to Raw, and then next week, or this week, or whatever, you could have Cole have one last goodbye, go out, and, you know, because he was taken out at TakeOver, you could be like, you know, he has unfinished business, but his boys will take care of it, or whatever. Um, and then Cole goes up to Raw, and leaves, you know, um, the rest of the Undisputed Era to finally get a bit more of the spotlight. Because honestly, as good as Fish, O'Reilly, and Strong are, they are aggressively overshadowed by Adam Cole. Um, we finally got to saw, see how good um, Kyle O'Reilly was in NXT, uh, you know, at TakeOver. And I think we finally can see more of all three of those guys if they split up and go their separate ways and do different things. Hell, I would, I, I could even see like you take like Roderick Strong and put him on SmackDown, or take Bobby Fish and put him on SmackDown, you know, and give him stuff to do against like Matt Riddle or something like that. I think that would be cool. Um, but, but, let's go ahead and move on to Rhea Ripley, who is coming up to Monday Night Raw to feud with Asuka right away. You know, I think Rhea Ripley could do some awesome stuff on Raw, not even just with Asuka. Like, she could do stuff with Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax, although I don't like Nia Jax. You know, she could do stuff with, um, Dana Brooke. You know, uh, Mandy Rose, you know, all of them. You know, she could do some really cool stuff on Monday Night Raw. But not as cool as the things I'm about to talk about with NXT. Now, what I want to do with NXT, so we're just assuming that NXT is going to be a part of the draft, um, which has been the entire thing. I, I We're assuming NXT is going to be a part of the draft. If it's not, then it's not. But I think it should be. And I think what NXT should focus on with this draft is taking people from the main roster who need a refresher. Not just people who are underutilized, but people who need something new. Something who need... Someone who needs... Uh, not, not... Who just needs a change. And I think there's no better example of that than Samoa Joe. Like, how awesome would it be to have Samoa Joe back in NXT? Samoa Joe could do so much stuff down there. He hasn't been utilized properly on the main roster since he's came up. Honestly, Samoa Joe should have been champion three times by now. There, there's honestly no one better on the mic on the roster than Samoa Joe. Um, he can go in the ring still. He... You know, all this stuff. He's great on commentary, but I want to see Samoa Joe in the ring. I need one, one decently long Samoa Joe title reign. And if it has to be an NXT, then I think it should be an NXT. But another man who would do great in NXT is Dominic Mysterio, specifically in the Cruiserweight division. I don't like how Dominic Mysterio was shot straight to the moon. I know it kind of feels like a backstep for Mysterio to move back down to NXT, although 
he was already on the main roster and was already working with Rollins, Murphy, um, Carrillo, all these guys who he was working with and having decent matches with and had good chemistry with. But I think if you take Dominic Mysterio and you take him down to NXT and you let him work with guys like Drake Maverick, um, you know, uh, Brian Kendrick, you know, Tony Nese, um, who else is in that Cruiserweight division? Isaiah Swerve Scott, um, Raul Mendoza, uh, El Fantasma, I can't remember his, his name, but him, you know, have him work with all these guys. And he can also work with guys like Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, uh, you know, he doesn't just have to sit in the cruiserweight division. You know, I just think it would be cool because Rey Mysterio got started in the United States because of the WCW cruiserweight division. So I feel like it would be really fitting for Dominic Mysterio to get a refresher and a new start in the cruiserweight division. I think that would just be cool. That would be neat. Uh, next up, Jeff Hardy. I just want to see this for shits and giggles. I really just want to see this for shits and giggles. I want Jeff Hardy to go down to NXT, and I want him to do a ridiculous, stupid spot fest with Johnny Gargano, with Tommaso Ciampa, with, just with anybody down there. Anyone who <laughs> could go down there with Jeff Hardy and just have a ridiculous, crazy, stupid spot fest. I want it. I want it now. Please let it happen. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, Liv Morgan, dude. I think Liv Morgan is great. She has good character. She can talk. Um, we don't get to see much of her in the ring, though. Like, how good she really is. And everyone talks. I, I think she's good. I think she's... Good. She could use some polish, and that's what this would do. They're you know, going back down to NXT, you know, getting to work with, you know, Candice LeRae, uh, Io Shirai, Tia Knox, um, you know, God, what the f what's her name? I'm struggling. <laughs> Dakota Kai, you know, having her work with all these girls and showing how good she is, I think that would be really good for Liv Morgan. And the last. But not least, Dolph Ziggler should go to NXT because I want to see Dolph Ziggler versus Finn Balor versus Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, Bobby Fish. I want to see Dolph Ziggler versus Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Damian Priest, uh, Cameron Grimes. I say I swear to Scott. Uh, 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 Drake Maverick. I want to see it all. I just want to see Dolph Ziggler go down to NXT and just have banger after banger after banger. I want him to win the NXT title from Finn Balor and just go down there and have banger after banger after banger with anyone he can get his hands on. I think that would do, first off, wonders for Dolph Ziggler's career. And I think it would also really be awesome for NXT to have the NXT title to have that name. You know, have another name like Dolph Ziggler in that book. Like, the names that have been NXT champion are already incredible, but if you had another guy like Dolph Ziggler, the prestige goes up. And the matches he can have, I'm just thinking about it. Like, even if Adam Cole was supposed to stay in NXT, Adam Cole versus Dolph Ziggler? The two Shawn Michaels clones? Oh my god! That match would be awesome! Oh man, Dolph Ziggler versus NXT. I want to see it. I just want to see him go down there and have, like, a ton of killer matches with anyone. Anyone and everyone. All of them. Every single one of them. And that's it. That's all I got. That's all that's all that's all we got. That's that's our twenty twenty draft. Um five five wrestlers for each brand. I 
And I'm gonna be honest with you, this was off the cuff, um, off the top of my head. I just picked five people from each brand. And you know what? I think we came up with a pretty good set of people going to each brand. If I had to pick who won my draft, I think it's raw, but you know how it goes. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.